concentration preventing someone from harming you. It is of five levels, Kamadhatu and four dhyanas. Acquiring the dhyanas. Question. Does the acquisition of the dhyanas involve other modalities? Answer. The absorptions of delight are acquired by birth or by regression. The pure dhyanas are acquired by birth or by abandonment. The anasrava concentrations are acquired by abandonment or by regression. The anasrava concentrations of nine levels, namely, the four dhyanas, the first three arapiya samapattis, the anagamya and the dhyananantara are able to cut the fetters. Actually, the anagamya and the dhyananantara are associated with the sensation of equanimity. Creation Minds when a person possesses a dhyana, he also possesses the creation minds of the lower levels. In the first dhyana he thus possesses two nirmanachitas, that of the first dhyana and also that of kamadhatu. In the second dhyana, three. In the third, four. In the fourth, five nirmanachitas. If the ascetic who is in the second, third or fourth dhyana wishes to understand, see or touch something, he must resort to a consciousness of Brahmaloka I. E. Of the first dhyana. When this consciousness disappears, the perception stops. The four apramanas. The five abhanas. The eight vimokses. The eight abhavayatanas. The ten krts nayatanas. The nine Anupur Vasamarpatis. The nine Samnas of the Asuha Bhavana. The three Samadhis, the three Vamoksas, the three Anas Ravendrias, the thirty-seven body Paksika Dharmas and all the qualities of this type come from the virtue of Jhana. Here they must be explained fully. V. Jhana Paramita. Question. You should have spoken to us about the virtue of Jhana. Why do you speak of Jhana only? Answer. 1. Dhyana is the source of the virtue of dhyana. By possessing dhyana, the bodhisattva has compassion for beings who, having at their disposal the many felicities resulting from the dhyanas and the samapattis, do not know how to pursue them, but seek their happiness in outer things, impure and painful. The bodhisattva feels great compassion at this sight and makes the following oath. I will act in such a way that beings obtain all the inner bliss of the dhyanas and samapattis. That they may be freed from impure bliss and that, in dependence on these dhyanas, they finally reach the bliss characteristic of Buddhahood. It is in this way that the dhyanas and samapattis take the name of virtue. 2. Moreover, in the dhyanas, the bodhisattva does not relish any enjoyment, does not seek any reward and does not pursue heavenly rebirths as reward. It is in order to tame his own mind that he enters into dhyana. By the skillful means of his wisdom, he will be reborn in Kamadhatu in order to save beings there. Dhyana takes the name of virtue in this case. 3. Furthermore. When the bodhisattva has entered into his profound dhyanas and samapattis, neither gods nor men can know his mind, his support and his object, for this mind is not disturbed by what is seen, heard, thought or cognized. Thus, in the Pimo Loki King, Vimalakirti explains quiescence to Saraputra. Do not rely on the body, do not rely on the mind, do not rely on the threefold world. In the threefold world, not to obtain either body or mind is quiescence. 4. Moreover, when a person hears it said that the bliss of the dhyanas and samapattis surpasses divine and human bliss, he abandons the sense pleasures in order to seek the dhyanas and samapattis. But seeking bliss and benefit for oneself is not enough. The bodhisattva does not act in this way. It is only for beings that he wants to acquire loving-kindness, compassion, purity of mind and the dhyanas of the bodhisattva who is not dissociated from beings. In dhyana, he produces the feelings of great compassion. Dhyana contains marvelous innermost bliss, but beings renounce it to seek external bliss. They are like a wealthy blind man who, not knowing and not seeing the many treasures that he possesses, goes out to beg his food. 
Those who know have pity for a person who, having at his disposal such marvelous objects, cannot know of their existence and goes to beg from others. In the same way, beings possess in their minds the bliss of the dhyanas and samapatis. But unable to actualize them, they turn to seek out a bliss. 5. Moreover, the Bodhisattva understands the true nature of dharmas, and so, when he has entered into jhana, his mind is at peace, and he is not attached to enjoyment. Heretics, even in jhana and samapati, do not have their minds at peace and, as they do not know the true nature of dharmas, they are attached to the enjoyment of the jhana. Question. However, the Arhats and Pratyika Buddhas are not attached to enjoyment either. Why do they not possess the virtue of dhyana like the bodhisattva? Answer. Even though they are not attached to enjoyment, the arhats and pratyika buddhas are without great compassion and consequently they do not possess the virtue of dhyana. Furthermore, they cannot practice all the dhyanas completely, whereas the bodhisattva is able to do so. Whether these dhyanas are coarse or subtle, great or small, profound or lowly, whether they concern an inner or an outer object, the bodhisattva practices them all completely. This is why the concentration of the bodhisattvas is called dhyana paramita, whereas those of other men is just called dhyana. 6. Moreover, the tirthikas, sravakas and bodhisattvas acquire all the dhyanas and samapatis. There are three kinds of faults in the Tirthika Dhyana. Attachment to enjoyment, wrong view and pride. In the Sravaka Dhyana, loving kindness and compassion are slight. They do not have at the disposal a knowledge in regard to the Dharma sufficiently sharp as to progressively penetrate the true nature of Dharmas. Being exclusively interested in their own selves, they destroy the lineage of Buddhas within themselves. In the Bodhisattva Dhyana there are no defects. Wishing to unite all the attributes of Buddha, they do not forget beings during the Dhyana and they endlessly extend their kindness even to insects. Kindness of Sankhakaya towards animals. Thus the Buddha Sakyamuni, in a previous lifetime, was a RSI with a conch-shaped headdress named Chang Cho Li. He was always practicing the fourth Dhyana. Interrupting his respiration, seated under a tree, he remained immobile. Seeing him in this posture, a bird mistook him for a piece of wood and laid her eggs in his top knot. When the Bodhisattva awoke from his dhyana and noticed that he had bird's eggs on his head, he said to himself, If I move, the mother will not come back, and if the mother does not return, the eggs will spoil. Therefore he went back into jhana and came out only when the nestlings were ready to fly away. 7. Moreover, except for the bodhisattva, other people cannot be introduced into the jhanas with a mind of kamadhatu. The bodhisattva who is practicing the jhana paramita is able to enter into jhana with a mind of kamadhatu. Why? Because from lifetime to lifetime, the Bodhisattva has cultivated the qualities and thus his fetters are slight and his mind soft and tender. 8. Moreover, other people eliminate the passions by means of a knowledge concerned with the general characters of things, such as seeing the transitory, painful impure nature. The Bodhisattva, by contrast, has eliminated the passions by analysis of the specific characteristics the Kimnari and the 500 RSIS. Thus, 500 RSIS who, while flying about, heard the song of a Chen Tolo Niu. Their minds became enraptured, they lost the basis of all their miraculous powers and fell to earth all at once. Drummer's action on the Sravakas. Some Sravakas heard to when Luan Mo, king of, 